second, sorry. Okay, so welcome to CORE. Uh, went to, welcome to the interim. I, I know that many of us have been working on various drafts and various discussions during the week, so this is probably not the only uh, CORE-related meeting that you have been having. Um, um, so uh, your chairs today, as usual, are Marco Tiloca and, and me, Jaime Jimenez. Um, I didn't get any minute takers to volunteer before. Maybe I, I, I will give it another try now. <clears throat> so please, if you would like to volunteer, even if it is partially anything really uh, that will help the discussion, I would expect a lot of discussion today. So it would be really nice to have good minutes of the meeting. It is recording anyways, but. I can Thank help you. until I leave. Thank you, Francesca. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to point out that in one hour there is another working group meeting starting. Uh, all right, so we'll try to be, be quick about it. Um, well, I mean, we we will make do uh, with the current minutes, and anyway, it's recording, so it's recorded, so uh, that's enough. So. Um, on the note well, I just need to remind you that the note well applies uh, for IPR and for the working group processes and the general code of conduct. And but in general, I mean, as far as conduct goes, I guess you know, try to be nice. We kind of know each other anyway, so should be fine. Um, few updates. Uh, um, well, first you see here the code EMD that I'm hopefully sharing. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with it, it seems to be the way to go in the ITF now. So we will probably replace Etherpad. Uh, it has a lot of nice features. You can see the the uh, output of the markdown in a nice uh, format. Uh, allows for plant UML and other diagrams uh, that I'm not going to do right now. So very convenient. Um, if you, you don't need an account, this is currently uh, free access, but eventually you may want to have a data tracker account. On the core updates, uh, we just got uh, at least these two uh, RFC to Bs. Uh, on the CNML Edge and the more units, RFC. So OAuth uh, uh, 48 is done uh, pretty much. I think one of them was waiting for uh, Moyans, uh, uh, one of the authors, uh, feedback. And uh, the other one is on the area director table. Uh, that will be Barry, and he's not in the call right now, but I mean, things are moving forward on the, these two. Um, well, from our point of view, they're done, right? Um, then Oscar Group come. So uh, I think Marco submitted a new version uh, yesterday or today. So it might be time to do work. Yes, sorry. Yesterday. Yes, yes. Yesterday. So it might be time to do working on Blast Call. Um, so it might be a good time to start looking into it, uh, hopefully. Uh, I guess uh, two or three weeks. Uh, is there any urgency, by the way? Can we do three? Marco? No particular urgency. It was good to have feedback okay. already before ITF 108. Mm, yep. Okay. Uh, anyway, we can uh, go into those details later on. And then uh, Yari just forwarded me uh, like a few seconds ago on the Jabber, uh, the the latest uh, version of the dev URM with the updates for the working group last call. And there he says that there's no, well, you can see it in the chat. Um, yeah. Uh, but, but, yeah, and that he will do another update uh, today. That, that that's the current variant, basically. So we will probably do also wrap up this this draft. And that's so much for as far as updates, high level updates that I have right now that we have right now for core. So we can get into the actual meeting discussion. And I think that will be now uh, Christian, right? I'll tell you something. I missed and forgot. Um, then go, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm just pasting the two. So I, I don't really have much um, kind of slide-ish things to go with this. Um, I'd like to just give you a brief update on um, on where we are with resource directory and I have to apologize. I wanted to have this in a much better state by today, but I just didn't manage and hacked up a few things. Um, so we just a second question, then would you like me to keep sharing the screen or do you want me to um, um, stop? 
I mean, I you can either could could you could you basically follow the link that I'm um, yeah. that I'm that I'm pasting there? So let me just update this. Um, so so with that um, with that fragment identifier, that would get us to basically what has happened so far in resource directory, which is basically running through the comments that we got from from the uh, from the feedback. This is from the stations is currently in. So that's area director review and also the other um, all of the the other areas input. Uh, most of this is really editorial. I mean. Um, there was boilerplate text that was wrong. There were things about the IANA registrations that that could be improved. So, so really, the the kind of the small stuff is represented in here. Are you? Yeah. Okay. In in, in here, um, the most invasive changes probably, just, which I just did a few minutes ago, um, replacing kind of consistently referring to the thing as the RD as opposed to. RD sometimes and sometimes resource directory capitalized, capitalized not capitalized. So this is kind of consistent now. Um, the larger, uh, the larger uh, bot, uh, chunk of things that's still that's kind of on my on my desk right now is the next link. If you could follow that as well, which is the processing what the feedback was on the. Um, on the security considerations. So, my my view of of the development of the security considerations was that we didn't have much initially, and then with each round of feedback, they got in cases of hey, you should consider this, you should consider that, and describe how is this done, how is that done, and rather than uh, take a step back and look at what we actually want to say, we fixed things as we got along. And in the April 16th interim, I think it was April, yeah, um, we had a talk about this. And my takeaway from that was that we should rather leave those things to the application and say more about how does an application um, arrive at a decision of what to protect, as opposed to you must protect this and this and that, and then everything will be safe, which it won't be because your application requirements will be different. So what I've started to sketch up was, so it's this is in a pull request. What you're seeing here is the rendered version of that. Um, it's an updated version of the security policies, which I'll hope to finish t today or tomorrow, but this shows the general direction. That is to say, what are the things that can be in a resource directory that you may want to protect, and what do you tap, what what do you need to consider when you do that? So one thing, basically, basically the four big topics are: you may or may not want to protect the endpoint name. In which case, if you're going by certificates, then you would probably have that in this in the common name. But that's one very particular example. And we are not um, giving normative. We don't specify how this is done, but just give guidance of you. You will have to find some way to pick that information out of there if you want to protect that. If you want to protect, on the other hand, what is in the resource links, that is, for example, if you have a, if you advertise firmware update servers and you don't want your clients to just ping everyone who claims to have a firmware server, then the then the claims that would be in there are, would be would look quite different. If you could scroll down a page or so, <clears throat> the the section on link confidentiality is, is kind of very very incomplete. As is the rest, but basically that says that will say um, if you post anything to the resource directory um, that is not what you advertise in your well known core anyway, then think twice before you do that. And on the other hand, if you if you're in a situation where things like that happen, um, then it will be up to the resource directory to authenticate the lookup clients as well. If everything in there is intended to be public anyway, there's no need to authenticate lookup requests. Um, and in the end, all those things could be combined, and different uh, sectors of a resource directory might have different policies. So I think this can largely replace the section seven that used to be there with kind of taking in snippets of that which are which are still relevant um, and would then also slim down a bit the security consideration section just because 
it's it, it will become more from if anything of what you put in there is supposed to be uh, is supposed to be, to be protected then there needs to be agreement between the the, the registrants and the resource directory on that and not so much this and this and that needs to be protected because we are already describing applications that do not protect those things <coughs> Sorry. because it's not relevant to them um, so that's that's it from I think that's it as far as updates to the resource directory are concerned. Yeah, um, let me just briefly go through the issues that we're having in there. So there's there's two or three more that I that are still pending, pending on my list. Um, yeah. Um, brief moment, please. So there's 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 one concern that we that we sh that that came up that we might want to talk about briefly in in this group here that is that a resource directory if it doesn't do um, source authentication um, or or client aliveness authentication uh, if it doesn't ensure client aliveness then it could be used to read data from devices on a local network, which is something that is generally avoided. So is that is there would... something I can share on the issue tracker, by the way? Uh, yeah, that's um, I'll just put the link in there. Yep. Here we go. 230 issues we've already been through. So yeah, it's, it's been a while here. Mm -hmm. um, or actually, it's this one, right? So this this will this will mean that there will be a, a round trip of something like, um, basically an, an an echo verification of is this client really alive, which makes the simple registration not as simple anymore as it used to be. It's still simpler than a full registration, but not that simple anymore. Any ideas on 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 whether that still just uh, still justifies having a simple registration. If I had a pen, I'd drop it now to verify that it could be heard. Um, could, 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 I, I barely understood you. Um, I don't don't know about the others. I couldn't either. Uh, David, I'm wondering, your video is on. That could be creating some uh, high bandwidth. Not that we don't want to see your face, but if you could close the video. Well, <clears throat> never mind. Um, sorry, Karsten, can you repeat, please? I try. Uh, no. Oh. This. Now we lost you, Karsten. Karsten, could you write it on the chat or on uh, on the minutes? And uh, Marco, you're the host. If you could be so kind to mute David, I don't think he can hear us. And also, mute now. yeah, and, and I don't want to be rude, but I'm thinking that probably the video streaming is what is causing a bit of latency. I think he's not awake. He's on. 
doesn't seem I can stop with me three. Sorry, I didn't realize it was me. <laughs> no problem. Uh, but then, Carson, please go ahead. We can hear you, Carson. He wrote in the chat. Okay, so he will be restarting the call. So, Christian, you, you want to continue in the meanwhile? I hear a lot of echo. I don't know if I'm the only one. The audio is horrible on, on this side. I could hear you well, Thomas. Same here. Oh, yes. Now, both Marco and Francesca are very good. But Jaime, well, Carson, not, not even mentioning him, but yeah, it's tragic. So, um, I don't know whether Carsten is, whether you're typing somewhere or not, but basically I'll take this as, okay, yeah, we still want simple registration, even if it means that there will needs to be an echo round trip to verify client aliveness. Um, that's fine with me as long as there's, yeah. Um, so I think the, this, the, the last, the, this big point about what do we want to say about, um, what do we want to say about how authentication is done for the resource directory leads us to the, I mean, on one hand, I'd like to have a bit of feedback of whether this is actually the direction the working group wants this development to have in because I'm not working with much here. So I'm just trying to get a direction that will get this on. And I don't know whether that's right or wrong. And I think that discussion will also lead us to the next point of how will those details then be done, which is the next item on the agenda anyway. Maybe we can continue with the next item and just start the discussion on authorization. I at least I haven't been lately uh, reading this issue, so I don't really have an opinion right now. It's reasonable, I mean, obviously, but I don't have more details. So, so just um, on the on the procedural side, what I will do um, is con uh, basically finish this pull request, um, mm -hmm. send out a mail to the list for a day or two, whether anyone wants to put something in right in there, um, mm -hmm. and otherwise make this a new draft version, um, ask around on the list again, and um, claim that this is addressing the reviewers' comments as a, um, based on that. Yep. Okay. It's good to me. Do you agree, Marco, by the way? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah. Okay, then next item on the agenda, the discussion on authorization. I guess I can um, stop sharing here and allow Klaus, right, to start sharing again. Uh, um, so in back in February, I think we had this uh, side meeting where we looked a bit into um, how to do authorization in, in resource directories. And um, now if I got Christian right, he, he wrote he rewrote um, that section about security policies. Um, I haven't seen that yet and I also didn't unfortunately have any time to prepare much uh, for this interim. So I, I haven't done any updates since that February meeting. So uh, please discuss. Um, could you guys share the some notes from that meeting, by the way? I don't think I was present. I don't know if everybody else was. 
or even if you could just summarize high level of the points that were touched. Um, so basically, in February, the resource directory draft had a sentence that basically said, uh, if you need authorization, then uh, please use ACE. And what we did in that side meeting was um, try to figure out um, how, how the generic flow would be if you use ACE. Um, I have the notes somewhere on my computer. I didn't find any online. Maybe you used Etherpad, I don't remember. But the notes are not very plenty. Well, that's not a lot to, to work with <laughs> right now. Um, I don't know if any other participants on that meeting uh, had could, could share the minutes or high level uh, discussion topics for the rest of us in this meeting. Uh, Klaus, who, who was in that meeting, by the way? It was, uh, um, yeah. I was there. One, two. And uh, you I didn't the notes, maybe? Okay. I didn't take me myself, so I don't have them. But it was essentially an early exploration on how ways could be used, in fact, with no real conclusion that I could remember. So maybe we can continue the exploration here. Yes. Well, so in practice, when we have been trying to use a resource directory and ACE, what we have found out is that ACE is a bit, uh, requires a lot of uh, private know-how in order to get started. And we, we were just wondering if it would be simplified in some fashion to have, um, just like where we have the simple registration in RDB, something else could be done also for ACE in order to, I don't know. I don't know what it is, if it is the, having the resource directory as a, a authorization server and just, having one single entity or whether that's better or not. But I was hoping to have that kind of discussion today here now. So, um, maybe I can contribute a bit to that. Um, so one one point we talked about at that meeting, if I remember correctly, was that um, at some point in time, the client, so, so the, the, the registrant and the, and, and the lookup client are both ACE clients here. The resource directory is the resource server, and there is an authorization server that may be co-hosted with the resource directory, but in general will not be. Um, and what we did talk a bit about was that there's there will probably be so there's there's two ways a registration can happen. Either the re, um, the, the registrant has already knows which credentials it needs to get from the uh, which which token it needs to get from the authorization server in order to do the registration. Um, but what is, I think, the most like or the more likely um, situation is that they, the, uh, the registrant will try to perform its, um, to perform the, uh, the registration and will fail where the, your credentials are not good enough for bidden message. That will then redirect it to the resource uh, to the authorization server from where it will be able to get its credentials or not if it's not authorized to um, and combining that with what i've been starting on the topic of the of the various ways a resource directory can can define its policies i think this is the more realistic uh, scenario because the client may not know whether the resource directory will limit it based on based on the links it's trying to put in there or based on its endpoint name or what's or not. But when it tries to do the registration, then the resource directory will not, you are trying to do this, but you need to be, depending on the setup, authorized to do, use the name EP equals that name in the sector D equals that sector, or you might need to be authorized to publish uh, links that indicate where a firmware update server is and that information can be expressed in a scope which is something 
which is something that the resource directory and the authentication server need to agree on, but both need to understand what does this particular scope mean. And then the registrant can go to the authentication server and tell, please um, give me a token that's good for this scope and that it, then it will either get that or not. Are we talking about just authorization for registration? Are we talking about authorization for both registration and lookup? Um, in lookup, this can behave the same way. So if the client performs a lookup, then it will it may it will probably hit a 401 on the first lookup it does, and then go to the authorization server and get a token that's good for that particular lookup. Provided lookups are provided lookups need authentication. I think the important observation here is that the resource directory is agnostic with respect to the onboarding process that you have. We are not trying to impose a specific onboarding process here. The onboarding process has to come from somewhere else. And the resource directory is just an application that helps in disseminating information that is uh, useful in that process. And of course, I have no idea if anybody heard me. Uh, we did. I was just trying to figure out what onboarding means in particular in this situation. Yeah, I think that that's the the that's the the interesting question. There are different ways for for setting up systems, system components, components finding each other, uh, and so on. And we are not trying to prescribe a single way for for the components to find each other and, and uh, obtain authorizations to work with each other uh, and so on. We are just trying to provide one component that can be used in such a, a process. Uh, Karsten, especially for the registration case, do you think AIF may help with one more uh, AIF case to define? Yeah, I'm not sure we even need another case because we are essentially posting to a certain well-known resource and uh, should be described by, described by AIF. The interesting, uh, more interesting question is who can actually give that authorization in such a way that the resource directory listens to it. But that's again outside the scope of, of the resource directory document. Mm -hmm. I, I agree that AIF should be able to do this without any, any special casing. We, we might need to have a way to include query parameters in an AIF, but then again, whether the scope is to do posts on the reg on the on the on the directory resource, or to do any operation on the registration resource, I don't I don't care too much, and that's something basically the resource directory and the authorization server need to agree on, and nothing more. And possibly the registrant, if it wants to preemptively get the authorization, but it doesn't need to. Do you need to think about the dynamic points that are created by the resource directory for each endpoint that can be updated those, in that direction? Those those would be the registration resources. So I think that this, this so basically whoever is allowed to post to say slash rd question mark um, ep equals foo would also be allowed to put and delete slash registration slash whatever it picks for foo and either of those can be used to describe the set of um, permissions that need is basically shared between them okay that does make sense
I'm, I'm thinking in the case of uh, live and web, for example, and we have here in the call David and Thomas and others that have been working on the um, on the standard. Um, there is no specific uh, authorization required for registration, and as far as I know, there is no lookup even uh, present. Um, I wonder if there is some uh, some platform out there using RD and ACE already um, that we could take as an example. Because as Karsten said, we are just building components, and but without having the whole picture, is is a bit hard, at least for me, to to think on how to optimize things. What sort of detail are you looking for? Audio? Is the audio what? okay, by the way? Or, oh, yeah, sorry. Yes. Yes, we heard everyone in the room. Okay, sorry. What sort of, of thing are you looking at? I mean, I can set up a, an authorization server and maybe even a resource directory. I think my resource directory right now screwed up very badly. Hmm. They could do this. I mean, is that what you're looking for? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking for um, someone uh, using uh, registration and lookup in which uh, two different parties do the registration and lookup, so authorization is required. So in the language and term sense, and please, David or Thomas, correct me if I'm wrong, um, when a language and term, so when an, when an endpoint registers on what is called the language and term server, which is running a resource directory, um, there is no uh, authorization needed because there is some either pre share key or some sync credentials already, and it is a trusted uh, component. And then there is no expectation of uh, other lightweight end to end servers or other lightweight end to end entities querying a different lightweight end to end server. So there is no lookup uh, function from the IoT side point of view. There is, of course, the, the application server and other things uh, on the back end and they, they have lookup and, and they can search in a database but that's a different thing uh, did, did i explain it correctly by the way david please uh, jump in and yeah, that's perfectly correct lightweight m2m -M deals only with the interface between the the endpoints the devices and uh, what we call the lightweight m2m -M server which is actually the the manager of these devices and everything that is a uh, lookup and so on from other entities is out of the scope. So, so to understand this, that lightweight M2M server would have original or would have configured knowledge of which credentials which device has and then accept or reject a registration based on the endpoint name when it comes um, and accepted only when it comes from the device that matches that endpoint name. This is the case for for the Paleon the Arma product. Yes, in the sense that the authorization is done as a, as a, as a, a DTLS tunnel to, to the server with pre-shared keys or certificates that have been installed in the device at manufacturing time. Yeah, the last item to himself is already is pre provisioned with the the security credential of the endpoints that will connect to it. So, so in but, a sense, it's already doing what we're describing here. It just takes a few shortcuts because they're not needed because it's all integrated in one thing. So then it's um, so it's one of the conclusions in the call that actually everything is fine and the, the RD and uh, ACE and authorization is not a problem anymore or? People seem a bit more quiet than usual. I don't know if it is the summer feeling, vacation coming. Christian, do you plan any way to have in the next version text covering how ways can be used? 
Um, I wouldn't really put text about concrete ACE usage in there because it it, it, it would. Um, so in the in the pull request that I showed before, I do have kind of some examples on a on a very high level um, where I do mention ACE in the sense that um, this will basically information about this will end up in the scope of of what um, of the ACE token, but. Not, no details because that, I mean the details will depend on the application and we can certainly have something like um, example application somewhere but for example I mean, the, the, these those will always be suitable only for for that particular case and more you more like yeah I mean examples and not nothing prescript prescriptive I, I agree with that way like I'm not we are not I, I was some suggesting that or Mark, I don't think Marco was suggesting no, that uh, either directly. We shouldn't be prescriptive in fact, so yeah. not really big details. I, I just remember from an early discussion with Alexi that he was suggesting to have yeah something more than just uh, if you want access control do something. Yeah but again the, the point here is that the resource directory is agnostic. So if, if you want to have something like, like uh, SNMP version 3, uh, you have to have a, a security play because there, there, is, there is no way that nobody else is going to define that for you. But this is not SNMP v3. This is a component in in a space where people already are building security solutions and whatever they, they are providing will be able to provide the the authorization information for the resource directory um, yeah may I, just to clarify actually like the scope of this the interim was not to actually make more changes to the resource directory draft but rather back uh, some weeks ago uh it was found out or when we were having a meeting, we, we discussed that the actually ACE, the usage of ACE in the context of RD was maybe a bit complicated. And we were wondering if it would be worth, I mean, so the, this, the, this interim was about that, about how to simplify the usage of ACE uh, for RD, not to make changes to RD. Okay. As far as I know. Good. Um, so the, the one thing that we haven't really discussed in ACE is how to handle dynamic resources. So uh, AIF can describe static resources, but if uh, there is some process that creates resources on someone's behalf, then you would have to define how the authorization that was initially expressed in terms of access to the resource that creates these dynamic resources would confer or continue to the dynamically created resources. And uh, mapping ACE plus AAF to the resource directory uh, probably would need this very tiny piece of glue, essentially saying, if you created it, uh, you have it, it's yours. So basically, that every statement about a resource is transitive over the over location links from there. Yes. I mean, <clears throat> still, applications can do it differently, but th this is a, a great way to to do the default authorization uh, for the resource structure. The other issue that may need to be discussed is what does the resource directory do when the authorization expires? Well, the trivial thing to happen would be that no further updates can come in and after the end of the lifetime, the resource goes away. 
Right, but that implies very long lived authorization tokens. Well, generally, th that's a good point. The, the, the lifetime of the dynamically created resource should not be longer than the lifetime of the authorization for dynamically creating it. I couldn't catch that. Can you repeat, please? The lifetime of a dynamically created resource cannot be longer than the lifetime of the authorization that was used for creating it. So a client should ask for an updated access token well in advance before it expires. Yes, and then it can renew the registration. Yeah, but and, yeah. go ahead, Christian. And if the client were to request a lifetime long on that, what it can do, it would be reject, uh, it would be for one rejected and be redirected to the authorization server again to get a longer token. I think the, author, the resource directory can already reduce the lifetime that was requested. No, not really. I right? think I think not, because I don't. I wouldn't know how it would communicate that back to the client. Okay. So if I understand you correctly, Karsten, you don't leave any safe little margin between a token expiration and and the, the deletion of the resource for which an updated token is needed, right? Yeah, so um, the, the client should be aware that is using some authorization that is time limited. Mm -hmm. So everything that the client is doing based on that authorization will have to inherit that time limit, both on the server side and on the client side. So the client should, should uh, know that it needs to uh, re-register yeah. uh, before that authorization actually ends. Yeah. And not to include any larger lifetimes because that would be rejected. Yeah, that, that's the part that worries me. But uh, if we, we actually are rejecting uh, authorizations, the, the, excuse me, dynamic resources that last longer than the authorizations for creating them, then the client will have to figure that in. I mean, it's, it's all not keeping us from have using the co-op problem information to also say that you either get a longer token or just decrease your lifetime. We can still do that without any change to RD because it's just another thing that comes into play. Response right. from ACE does tell you when the token expires. Yeah, but the RD wouldn't tell you that it's rejecting your authorization, your your update, because it's it has a too long lifetime. I agree that the the problem state the problem draft would help with that. At this point, seem general enough to be included in the draft and we're even abstracting from ACE, right? Yeah, I, I was I was trying to, to say this in the most general way possible, not necessarily limited to ACE. Right. So it's good considerations to have anyway, I think. And we know what that means if, exa if exactly ACE is used. Any other big complication in case from possibly using ACE that anyone is worried? But well, just to go back to a bit a second. Um, so in the lightweight MDM case, basically we would say that the lifetime of the key is infinite, right? Uh, 
I'm no expert in Lightweight and Twin, but um, yeah, the way it is now, as far as I remember, it's an old version of the registration uh, of the registration interface of the resource directory, in which you include the, the lifetime as a parameter during the registration. Yeah, and that's um, change. Yeah. Right, but the authorization yeah. lifetime on the key is is never is is infinite. Uh, I don't remember. I, as far as I know, it sounds like yes, but I, I'm not sure. Maybe the latest version of Lightweight and Doom has changed. Um, so, the, which key so, are we talking about? Is it the, the location that is written by the resource directory or the, the key at the, the TTLS or TLS level? Whatever key you're using for the purposes of authorization. Okay, which so I yeah. is, is the TLS key. Okay, so this one uh, are dealt with uh, through a different mechanism. So basically, there is a specific lightweight and twin server, the Bootstrap server, who, who is in charge of uh, updating and uh, modifying the keys through special operation. On the on the endpoint, but it's not part of the. It's it's in the the whole lightweight M two M system, not on the specific part of the registration to the lightweight M two M server. This is a separated mechanism. So, are there any lifetimes there? Well, there is the lifetime that the that the implementer decide to. To use, there is no, no, no requirements expressed in the lightweight and twin specification. Only guidelines and uh, advices. Okay. There are the means to to update the keys and change them and uh, and update them, but there is no no specific requirements on what you should. Right. The the, the question is. Uh... Do the participants in, in the protocol know what the lifetime is going to be in the end? Is that information being exchanged or is it uh, some system configuration that you just have to know? Uh, no, there, there's nothing at the, the protocol level, I would say, that uh, indicate that. Just that maybe when, like for instance, in our case, when we want to, to make a, a, key, uh, a key update, we basically invalidate the previous key at the at the lightweight and to m server level. So when the device cannot well, has, uh, receive a non-authorized uh, answer from the server because the, the key is using uh, are not up to date, it will then contact contact the bootstrap server, and the bootstrap server will provide him with the updated keys. But it's not part of the, the information that is in exchange between the server and the client. In the between the device and the lightweight and web server. Okay, so that, that sounds like the, the answer to Jim's question is yes. I mean, I, I guess the lifetime is a priori infinite, unless the bootstrap server does something or decides due to the implementation characteristics to change it. But I, what I'm thinking is that if I, if one company has one live with server and another has the live with another live with server, and they are bound to the first one's bootstrap server, I'm not so sure how the second one can actually change the case in that case. How, how do you signal the keys have expired? I, I don't know. Yeah, no, there's, there's no mean except by uh, refusing the connection, denying the connection. So, so mm. yeah, I, I used to say that the owner of the bootstrap server is the owner of the devices because the bootstrap server has 
can manage all the security of the devices. Yeah. So, um, I'm sorry, I, I was dropping out for so long. Um, so, where are we writing up what, what we are discussing? Is there going to be a draft about this? Or? No, it's just the minutes. The idea, I mean, one of the potential ideas with this session, we found out that it was necessary to simplify aids for some RD use case. Uh, somebody could take a stab at doing some graph or something like that, but I'm not so sure anymore. Um, from at least from this meeting, I don't know what you guys think. So I I th I think a good step here would be to have a, basically have some text, possibly document that just describes an example setup of how a resource directory with an authorization server and all those other components. Um, could play together, like an example setup. And I think I think I could even fit that in at least preliminarily in the in the resource directory extensions in the sense of yeah this is this is one this is one of those ways how all those things could be combined. I think it would be useful from the informational point of view, but what I'm getting at is that I'm not so sure that the, there is an actual requirement anymore for uh, other purposes than just information. So one, one other approach would be to actually write something into the AAF document. That would make sense as well, yeah. Possibly even more. So I will need to switch to a different meeting in two minutes. So I'm looking forward to reading the, the rest of the minutes of this meeting. And uh, I'll try to find out what potential addition to the AF document uh, we could uh, create from this. Thank you. We'll continue. I guess we can continue a bit longer. Um, the rest of us. Sure. Thank you, Carson. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Um, so maybe um, I don't know if you, Klaus, has uh, if you have any input because I remember we have had discussions on RD and OAuth and uh, usability, and you know this could be a good time to to say uh, something, if you want to. Because um, we have all these other people in the, you know, um, from the lab with them point of view and, and other ACE experts and so on. Mm, I don't know. Um, so the original idea of that meet, site meeting a long time ago was to take the components that we develop in our working groups and just put them together once to see if they can actually combine, as, as we always say, um, we build the components and uh, then let other people combine them. But um, maybe there are some gaps, um, maybe there are some clarifications needed and, and so on. So doing um, this uh, non very ITF uh, activity of combining um, components seemed like a useful thing to do. And um, now I think um, we have uh, identified some areas where maybe, uh, as was said, uh, maybe something could be clarified in AIF um, or so. And so it seems we have a good way forward. Uh, mission accomplished. Did it make any sense to spend an hour or two during the week of the hackathon to attempt this or, or do you think it's too early for that?
And in, in theory, uh, everything that needs to be implemented should be there, right? Um, so you, you would do um, the first step of discovering your resource directory as described in the RD draft. Then you would uh, probably try to do a registration. Uh, you would fail because you don't have the authorizations and then you get bounced to an authorization server. For that, we should have a draft that says how, how this redirect works and um and and so on so in, in theory all the components should be there and it should be easy to go, to put them together in a hackathon also half of the redirect already exists um the other half doesn't and because i could never convince anybody that it was important um so as part of the authorization fail from the a from the resource server you get told what as to go talk to but unfortunately you still don't get told ask for this scope why not so that, because no one ever believed me that it should be there um <laughs> which is because the, the scope should be completely agnostic in this case to the client it should not have to try to figure out what the scope is so the client may know, but it may just also not. Right. Because, you know, at that point, it's like, well, if I talk to two different resource directories and they have a different idea of how the scope looks, I have to figure out which one is time, to, which, which one I'm using. Um, I can also imagine that things get um, into the territory of not entirely clear when it comes to commissioning tools versus the devices registering themselves. Um, I guess the commissioning tool needs to be authorized to register the resources of some device. Where does the commissioning tool get its authorization from? Uh, also from the from the authorization server. So if the commissioning tool does not know the structure of the scopes, it will just be upgrading its token time and again and again and again for every registration it does. Um, if of course the commissioning tools tool gets a bit more knowledge about how those things look like, it might it might get it might ask the authorization server for a token that actually represents um, all its might and thus be good for for everything that the that it can do yeah so again in theory all the components should be there but uh, i think it would be nice to just see it in practice where where someone has put all these components together for some maybe artificial scenario so, so does does anyone have both a resource directory implementation and an ace implementation other than jim Because I have the ACE implementation on my on my to do list for probably two years now, and didn't manage yet. So I won't. Well, as of in, now, in, I won't be much help in a hackathon. Well, but in theory, it, you could actually use your resource directory implementation with my ACE implementation. Um, I would still need to glue those together in the sense of. Um, I mean, I could use your AS, but I st my 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 RD currently needs kind of pre-configured, hard-coded um, OSCOR keys. Right, you'd have to modify your 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 RD to be able to accept the ACE protocol, but you wouldn't actually need yes. to write an authorization server. Yes, that that I think I can skip. Well, as far as language and talk goes, we have implementation, but for this exercise, it's only the uh, registration interface, which is pretty useless, I guess. I don't know if uh, anyone from OMA would be interested in this exercise, maybe as an extension to the existing language and talk. I don't know if they would like to use it, no idea. My my hunch would be that if a client tries to register with a 
uh, with an L lightweight M2M um, server that would be, um, then basically that 401 could tell it to please talk bootstrap server protocol to, to yeah. that bootstrap server. Actually, that could be useful to redirect to another bootstrap server in the same way. Mm -hmm. It's just deny the connection. That could be better. Yeah. Does anyone know how OCF does it, by the way? I think they had an implementation too. I'm thinking more like on the product side. No idea. Somebody sent a PC email to Michael. Yeah, we can, the chess can do that, we can do that and ask. And just a question about the, the um, Lightweight M2M setup. Can a Lightweight M2M server in, in, uh, accept key material from different bootstrap servers? So could my device that, ha that has its bootstrap server, and we already heard that's basically the owner of the device, um, go to some Lightweight M2M server and say, um, hey, here I am, and I know you won't accept my credentials, but here's my bootstrap server. Ask him, and if you take it, basically, if you accept that bootstrap server, you might accept my credentials as well. Oh, it's it's not the, the, the use case and the, the design philosophy of uh, Lightweight M2. Okay, so it's is it is it always one bootstrap server and one... one well, Lightweight actually... The interaction between the various servers, Lightweight M2M server and Bootstrap server, uh, is out of is not defined uh, in Lightweight M2M uh, specification. And what well, it's uh, the philosophy is more centralized than that. It's a device management protocol, so meaning that what we call the Lightweight M2M server is actually a uh, a kind of resource directory and a co-op client. And uh, it's there to manage, to configure and manage the devices, which are co-op servers, even if we call them lightweight and turn clients. So basically, all the devices are known by the various servers. And it's the bootstrap server that will, uh, the devices, when they first boot, they will contact the bootstrap server. The bootstrap server will configure them with the information on how to connect to the lightweight M2 servers with the UI and the credential. And then the devices will connect to the lightweight M2 server, will register to them using a, a kind of resource directory format. And then the the lightweight M2M server will perform various uh, co-op uh, method on the device resources to configure them. So basically that is saying that at the time a device would connect to a lightweight M2M server, um, its bootstrap server will already have some pre-existing um, chat with that server because it configured it to use that server. So that bootstrap server will, in some out of scope way, already have talked to the actual Exactly, server. Okay, do we have any other discussion or RD and authorization? I must confess, if draft once, but I don't remember much about it. I don't. Mm. And it changed yesterday. So there are some new. Okay. <laughs> Mm 
Sure. Just getting to a point uh, you mentioned before, Christian, I think it can be useful anyway to have informational content in the uh, RD extensions document uh, to give an example of workflow. But of course, it's informational. Yeah, but if I mean if 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 that's all in, I'll look through the I'll look through the oh. cases. Possibly there is if 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 we put text into the into the AF appendix, there is a way to just reference that. So like. And right. if you have authorization involved there, look over there. Okay. Uh, one question I have actually. Run, oh, sorry. sorry. Um, in the long run, we may actually want to turn that into an informational document out of the ACE working group, just to give some. This is how you do this. This is how you do certain types of things. But I think for now, it's going to be where it is. Sorry, one question. So if basically the gist of it is to allow uh, the different methods to each uh, uh, resource on a co-op server. Is that it? So like a simple form of writing ACLs for your eyes. Mm. At some level, we already do that actually in in Leviton too, and that's interesting. They well, they already do that, but they they do these read write execute operations. It's more like mapping to CRUD operations, but essentially it's similar. Read write execute get put post what's the difference? Exactly. Does that apply also to patch and fetch and all the methods? It's becoming a bit more generic now. So what you mentioned is the the rest case that was the only case till yesterday now it's one of the possible cases as an instance of a template uh, that you can use to describe more generally um, what to do even in terms of roles or on a resource not necessarily identified by a uri and in fact we are creating a second instance to cover the group com documents in ace Mm -hmm. So we have to do some minutes. Um, I'm wondering if we can still continue on the on the RD topics in here, or if you guys have any other um, uh, items you want to raise. Personally, for instance, I'm curious to know how the RD extension is going. I haven't followed it uh, recently. I'm seeing that there is not many updates though, but uh, not much activity. Basically, 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 just sitting there waiting for other use cases to come up or anyone to show. Mm -hmm. So basically, any any particular interest in something to develop further. Mm -hmm. um, what so, I, I think the to, to me the the single point that would be worth really expanding here, um, but that depends on on the direction lightweight M to M. I would like to take is to try to align the proxying mechanism with lightweight M to M. So if in lightweight M to M anything were to come up in the direction of um, allowing one device to access another one via the server, then that I think could be expressed pretty straightforwardly through the proxy um, th through the through the reverse proxy uh, thingy. Actually, we had an interesting discussion yesterday with, uh, I think Alan Solowe was present, but we were a bunch of us. And I mean, in, in Live with M2M, as far as I also understand, there is no uh, actual proxies. It's always one Live with M2M server to one Live with M2M client and vice versa. Um, and there is no expectation on, even though you, every endpoint has a co-op client and server, and some of them are on the same subnet, there is no expectation of direct communication between two language and um, I'm, I'm, endpoints. I'm not so much talking about direct communication. Oh. So okay. the way the way lightweight M to M routes communication is always through the lightweight M to M server, which is which which is fine. But um, thing is, you can't express. Um, so so um, David, I think you mentioned that there's kind of this IoT side, and then there's the the whole backend, and there's just as far as I understand, currently no way for the IoT side to interact with other things on the IoT side. 
Now, if no, if that ever no becomes problem. relevant, then I think it can be expressed by this proxy extension. If it doesn't become relevant, there's not much point to it. Mm, maybe, David, you have a more day-to-day -day knowledge of language and twin requirements, gathering process, and so on. Yeah, uh, currently the um, lightweight and twin, we are finishing the version 1.2 of the enabler. Then there will be a requirement phase that will start, I guess, in September to gather the, the requirements from, uh, from the various uh, companies that are involved in the OMA regarding lightweight and twin. But judging from the past, this, this kind of requirement that uh, one uh, IoT device would like to access resources present on another IoT device authorized by the lightweight and twin server has not come up yet. So I don't think, well, I don't know if it will be part of uh, next version of lightweight and twin, but currently no one has expressed this kind of uh, requirements. As I said, the, the use cases are very centric. It's really a device management, mainly by uh, uh, oper network operators on the, of the devices that are connected to their network. Mm -hmm. And actually, I'm, I'm realizing that even if you wanted to, if that uh, was expressed, then the first thing to do would, would be to add a lookup uh, possibility, right? Because how the device find the other device he wants to contact, anyways. Yeah. Uh, from what I've none of the the current draft of the resource directory uh, it would be the the way to go yes yes and at that point in time you would need to have an, a base address that you can put in there because right now those things don't have base addresses and the, then you can't use the fmr report anymore and then you'll need something proxy like -ish. yeah exactly yeah. but the, the way i see it lightweight and 2 is more gathering various uh, standards mainly IETF RFCs and explaining how to put them together more than defining its own process and so on. So everyone at the OMA is uh, very keen of, on relying of, on uh, published RFCs rather than uh, reinventing the wheel and defining new stuff. So don't worry if the, if the need arises, uh, the resource directory will be the, the main uh, provider for the future. So any other items to be raised now? When do we have the next interim? I don't remember right now. This is the last one of this series. Ah, all right. So the next big thing will be uh, ITF 108, last week of July. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, we still have the minute, but I guess we, uh, unless somebody has something else, we could uh, close it already, the call. Um, there is, uh, oh yeah, on top of my head, there, there was this, as I said yesterday, there was this interesting discussion on DinLink and on the um, use of proxies with co-op. I think that could be maybe shared with a larger audience once the main participants are, are happy with the conclusions. So it might be that we have another ad hoc meeting coming, not a proper uh, interim. So just, uh, you know, just follow the mailing list, it will be sent there. And I think that's all I have. Marco, please, if you have something else as well. I just mentioned that a new version of the VRM was submitted. So you wish for that at the beginning of the meeting. It happened. Great. So we have a new version. Yes. I'll have so, a Some more homework, something else to check. Sure. <laughs> Oh, in fact, actually, this dev URN will be the final. So at some point in OMA, if you guys, because you guys are using URNs at some point, uh, so you might want to have a look at this. Hmm. 
Don't copy paste the name of the draft on the chat. On the on the well, not on the well, on the minutes and on the chat. Well, if, if that is all, then uh, I think we can call it a day. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye. Bye.